when I work with these cubes, I used to just add encaustic medium straight to the wood, but these cubes are, I believe it's balsa wood, which is extremely porous. And I would put layer after layer in and it would just sink into the wood. So it would be several layers before I could get an actual build up onto the surface. So whenever I work with this kind of wood or cubes like this, I always start with encaustic gesso now. Um, it allows a ground for the wax to adhere to uh, without it soaking into the wood and me having to use a bunch of medium to get any kind of build up. I'm adding about three layers to each side of this cube before I carve into the surface. Okay, so here's the cube. It's got three layers on each side, and I wanted to do a map. It's been a long time since I've done anything with maps uh, in my encaustic work, and I, I miss it. Um, I really love maps. I love kind of doing abstract lines and things like that. And So I decided that on each side I was going to do a different looking um, kind of map. And and in this piece, I'm actually going to try a, a couple different layers of doing the incised lines. I knew when I started this piece that I wanted to be really careful about the lines going off the edges. I wanted them all to meet so that each side kind of flows into the next side. So I'm trying to be really careful about the lines that I extend to the edges. Now when I do squares like this, lines that are really close together, um, I have to kind of carve out the corners of those squares because if I just do the lines, the wax, residue will block some of the some of the lines and I want to make sure that I'm getting good clean squares and not uh, kind of messed up lines. I hope that makes sense. I'll point that out in a later part of the video so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. I decided to do a little two-tone effect. So I'm trying white and purple and I kind of overloaded it. <laughs> I was going to do one side at a time, but since I, I squeezed out so much oil paint, I decided to just cover all the sides at the same time and wipe them all off at the same time. It didn't end up as messy as I thought it would. I did, um, you know, because it's a cube, you have one side has to rest on the table and at some point that's going to be a side that that you're working on that still has wet paint on it so so i i had to clean up the workstation a little bit i had to put some paper towels down at, cer at certain points so that i could kind of minimize the the mess a little bit
So now it's time to wipe away the oil paint. This is really my favorite part, even though sometimes it can take a while. But it's just watching the, the paint disappear is, is pretty satisfying. I really like it. But I did this part in two steps. So I wiped each uh, cube surface. Uh, I wiped as much off as I could. And then because when you carve into the wax, you get wax residue that builds up on the sides of your line and it creates kind of these little, oh, just this buildup that kind of makes your lines look less like lines and more like crevices or different things. And it can affect the way the oil paint, it can affect the way the lines look with the oil paint in them. So once I got off as much oil paint as I could, I'm scraping the lines to kind of get rid of that excess wax that built up around my, my, my carved lines. And you should be able to see, once I wipe away the rest of the oil paint, that the lines are much finer and detailed than they were before. I try to go in the direction of the line when I can. That usually makes it a little cleaner. And you need to be careful when you scrape that you don't go too deep. So you need to be gentle when you do this. Otherwise you'll scrape off too much wax and end up with a hole in, in the side of your painting. So now I'm adding a couple more layers of wax to each side so that I can build up the layer and add another size line map to, to each side of the cube. I have to be really careful when I fuse this first layer especially because if I do it too deeply I'm going to mess up the lines that I've created and I don't want to do that. So I have to be really gentle, kind of fuse it and then stop, fuse it, stop. That usually works pretty well. So once I did that first layer, I added some more wax to each side. So I have a couple layers of, of the clear and now I'm fusing. You have to rest a little bit between each side, obviously, because the wax, you know, turns liquid, gets really hot, but it doesn't take too long for it to cool enough to rotate the cube. All right, now I'm ready to start my second map. So for this finishing layer, I wanted to make the lines a little bit thinner. And I like that look a lot better than the than the larger squares that I that I did at the beginning. I'm still being careful to meet the lines where they extend off the edges of the of the cube. Here you can see how I'm really carving around each square in that grid just to make sure that there's no wax residue getting in the way of those fine details.
I'm hoping you can really tell how that makes a difference. That was the fun part. This time I'm filling and wiping away the paint as I go rather than doing it on all the sides. And it did work a little bit better. It was a little less messy. Now this, once the, once this final layer has dried and all the oil paint and everything, I'll go back and buff it and get rid of all of the fingerprints and, and things like that that are left on the surface. And it'll be, it'll be really fun because the, the clear and caustic will be nice and glossy and you'll be able to see the depth between that first map and the second map, which is really what I was going for here. And one of the fun things about doing different layers of, of incised lines. I'd love to hear you guys' comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.